This is the Sabbath School lesson for the first quarter, 2022. Lesson 2, the message of Hebrews, ready for teaching on January 8. It's authored by Dr. Felix Cortez, Associate Professor of New Testament Literature in the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary at Andrews University, and your reader for today is Dr. Percy Harold. Tuesday, January 4, Jesus is our champion. Compare 1 Samuel 8, 19 and 20, and Hebrews two fourteen to 16 What did the Israelites look for in a king... And how were these wishes fulfilled in Jesus? First Samuel 8, beginning at verse 19. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, No, but we will have a king over us, that we may also be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Hebrews two fourteen to 16 Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. The Israelites wanted the king to be their judge and their leader in battle, because they forgot that God was their king. The complete restoration of God's rule over his people came with Jesus. As our king, Jesus leads us in the battle against the enemy. Hebrews 2, verses 14 to 16, describes Jesus as the champion of weak human beings, as we've just read. Christ faces and defeats the devil in a solo combat and delivers us from bondage. This description reminds us of the battle between David and Goliath. After being anointed as king, where you can read that in 1 Samuel chapter 16, David saved his brethren from slavery by defeating Goliath. The terms of engagement determined that the winner of the combat would enslave the people of the other party, as we read in 1 Samuel 17, verses 8 to 10. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel, and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Thus David acted as a champion of Israel. He represented them. Read Isaiah chapter 42 verse 13 and Isaiah 59, 15 to 20. How does Yahweh describe himself in these passages? Isaiah 42 verse 13. The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud. He shall prevail against his enemies. And chapter 49 of Isaiah beginning at verse 15. Can a woman forget her nursing child, and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Your sons shall make haste. Your destroyers and those who laid you waste shall go away from you. Lift up your eyes, look around you, and see." All these gather together and come to you, as I live, says the Lord. You shall surely clothe yourselves with them all as an ornament, and bind them on you as a bride does. For your waste and desolate places and the land of your destruction will even now be too small for the inhabitants, and those who swallowed you up will be far away. The children you will have, after you have lost the others, will say again in your ears, The place is too small for me. Give me a place where I may dwell. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 to 16 alludes to the notion that God would save Israel in a solo combat. 
Note this passage from Isaiah 49.25. For thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken, and the prey of the tyrant be rescued. For I will contend with those who contend with you, and I will save your children. As Christians, we often think that we are engaged in a solo combat with Satan. When we read Ephesians six ten to 18 we see that, yes, we are in combat with the devil, but God is our champion, and he goes to battle before us. We are part of his army. That is why we have to use his armour. Also, we do not fight alone. The you in Ephesians 6 is plural. We as a church take the armour and fight together behind our champion, who is God himself. Let's read Ephesians 6, beginning at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And so, to finish today, what does it mean to put on the armour of God? That is, in our daily struggles with self, temptation and so forth, how can we avail ourselves of the power that enables us through God's strength to be faithful? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind, and it is written. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. Remember, God is always faithful.